So I'm just going to go over the program that we're going to uh, bring in some data for real quickly. And uh, you guys might be familiar with this program already. You might have presented on it. Um, it's just the, the COVID-19 vaccination program. I thought that this would be a good one, given the current state of affairs. Um, and, you know, you might be grappling with this problem yourself either soon or already have. Um, so uh, I'll just review it really quickly um, because I believe you've already talked about it. Um, so I'll just select one of these facilities. All right, so it's the, the COVID-19 vaccination program is basically broken up into two separate components. The first component is where you add in the demographic details of a person, right? So you, uh, you indicate what date that they were registered in your system. You enter in some identifying information like um, a national ID number, um, their, their name, their sex, their date of birth, their phone number, things of that nature um, in order to register that individual so you can find them later on and kind of make a shared record for all of their vaccination history, right? Um, so I can just enter some example information. Let's say they're registered, I don't know, yesterday. Um, So you can see some of the information that you would typically enter. Um, of course, you know, this varies from country to country. This is, um, as, as you would have discussed already, right? This is just the kind of generic version of this, but then country by country, they, they implement their own version of this that is then modified. But for the purposes of this exercise, I just wanna kind of show you the overall program, how it's made up, and then we can see how we can bring some data in and some of the pitfalls that are associated with this as well. So once I enter in that demographic information, I just, you know, after I register them in, um, you know, I might enter the vaccination data on the same day. I might not, just depending on the process. You know, in some cases, people are registering all their individuals or their populations or subsets of their populations um, before they're actually providing the vaccination. In other cases, they're just performing the registration of the person and the first dose on the same day. So let's say in this scenario that, you know, everything's occurring on the same day. And this is really the second part of this vaccination program, right? So you have the, the data then that you enter related to the actual vaccination. And this is really the two components that you're dealing with in this particular program. Other programs that you might look at might have more kind of separation, more stages as we call them, um, separate processes um, that you deal with um, as time goes on. In this case, you might have a second dose, um, for example, and this is just the same information actually that's collected. Um, during that second dose. So let's just go over some of the information here. You know, you identify if they're pregnant or not, um, if they have any underlying conditions, and if so, what they are, uh, if they've previously been infected with COVID-19, and then um, all the vaccination information, right? The vaccine that they've been given, um, the manufacturer, the expiry date of the vaccination, um, let's say it's next year sometime. Uh, the dose number, and then some other information. So this is all related to the actual vaccination that you're providing to the person, okay? So when you start a, um, an implementation, you know, if you've been doing things in another system, you might have this data located somewhere else, right? Um, to begin with, you might just enter it all in an Excel register. You might enter this into an access database. You might use some other system um, that, that, you know, might not be, might not have been serving your needs at that point in time, but was just set up temporarily in order to kind of get things done. So I've seen this in a couple of places where I've helped um, to get started, where they've just been using, you know, um, Excel basically um, to enter in all their data um, line by line. They enter in one person and they enter in all the information related to that individual. So in those scenarios, if you then switch over to something uh, like THIS2, um, you might want to bring over that data that you have, right? You wouldn't want to re-enter all those records. That would be a significant time sink, and, you know, it'd also be quite difficult to do, okay? So uh, when we're bringing in this data, you know, the, the first thing we have to do is kind of look at the data and determine, you know, if there are any significant issues with the data. Um, then we try to kind of format the data correctly. Um, formatting the data can sometimes be difficult, but this uh, app that uh, the History Ghana team had created has made formatting the data much simpler because you know you just look at it like a regular Excel sheet. Basically, you don't have to make too many modifications. Um, you know, and we'll we'll have a look at what the sheet actually looks like. 
Um, and then, you know, um, there's this whole process of mapping. Eric went over it very briefly in his demo. Um, the mapping for tracker data does take a little bit longer, but, you know, if you're importing quite a significant amount of records, it will save you a, a lot of time, of course, um, especially if you're not kind of um, too familiar with the, the you know, how, how you would import data otherwise inside of DHIS2. So if I have a look at this, you know, and I want to break it up into these two, two stages, two, two pieces of information, the first thing I want to do is kind of look um, at the data that I have. And, and the reason why I mentioned this is I'm just going to pull up some, some sample data here. Okay. Um, this is kind of anonymized data that uh, we had about 40,000 records, uh, basically, um, that we were dealing with that were in, in this format. And I've just taken some examples of what they had um, and what we had to kind of grapple with to try and fix. So it, it, I haven't provided too much information here, just some demographic details, just so you can see maybe an example of, you know, what you might uh, see when you're looking at various types of data. Um, as an example here, you see duplicates, right, already uh, duplicate records um, that have been registered. Um, you see some issues with the date of birth, for example. Um, you know, these are not years. It's not year one, year two, right? So all the years have been entered wrong for their date of birth. Um, and then the identifiers as well, right? There's all kinds of different formats um, for the passport. Um, so just as an example, right? Uh, when, I, when I mean you might have to kind of go through the data and, and just clean it up a little bit, or, or maybe significantly clean it up if, if it is really kind of problematic, um, then, you know, you have to look at the data a little bit and just determine if I have all these old historical records and there hasn't been a lot of data validation occurring on these records, um, then, you know, you might have to clean, the, clean them up first before you can get them in a format that would be useful to bring them into the system, right? So that would be the mix of demographic information that's used to identify this person, as well as any information in this case related to the vaccination. You know, in other cases, it might be, uh, you know, in Eric's example, TBK surveillance, for example, um, if you're doing this, uh, doing something related to that. So whatever program you're working with, you, you might have a problem with both the identifying information, as well as kind of the core programmatic information that's, um, you know, being used um, when you're tracking this individual through that through that service uh, uh, or whatever you're providing and tracking. So, you know, um, when you have all these records, you would go through some process to kind of clean it up a little bit. And, and we don't have to get into the kind of granular details of that, but just to orient you to the fact that, you know, from a, from a program management point of view, you, you might have to give some, some time in order for this to happen, right? You want to make sure you identify the time that's available in order to clean this data up before you're kind of thinking about bringing this into a system because typically there, there will be some errors, um, especially if you know, you're bringing in you know, a significant amount of records. Let's say you're bringing in 50,000 or 100,000 records, for example, um, or even more potentially, right? Depending on, on how many records you've entered into whatever other tool or system or even an Excel sheet um, that you have. So, so you do want to give a little bit of time for this. Um, as part of your process. So, uh, you know, if you're thinking about, oh, I need to bring in data from another system, um, you know, you do want to make that consideration and, and you can't have that expectation that it's just going to be done like right away um, because, you know, the, the date, there might be some issues with the data beforehand before you actually get to the point where you can bring it into the system, all right? Okay, so after the data is formatted, uh, you would want to kind of, or after the data is cleaned up a little bit, you would kind of want to format it in a way that is accepted by the system that you're bringing it into. And in this case, you know, if you're bringing it into DHIS2, there are different ways to format it because there are many ways to import the data into DHIS2. And we're just going to talk about one approach because I believe it's quite easy to understand um, compared to um, some of the other ways you might bring in uh, data to DHIS2. So if we're looking at individual records, um, what we have here first, you know, the, the way the sheet looks, you know, don't worry about it too much. We're not going to go through and, and figure out how to format all this data in different ways. Once again, this is just to understand the process a little bit and some of the time um, and steps associated with that process, right? Um, so if I look at this sheet, it has all the information basically that we just covered um, within the sheet itself, right? So if I look in DHIS2, we talk about uh, we select a facility first before we register that person, right? When we register that person, we have a date in which I register that individual. Um, then we have all this demographic details that we went over, right? And then 
within, uh, after I've registered them, they will receive their vaccination, either their first or second dose. And we have a bunch of information related to that, that visit um, that they actually are you know, um, tracked and recorded related to their vaccination history. So within that sheet, but what we have basically is one line per individual. Okay, so this person here, for example, all the information on this one line has all the data that I need. Um, it's kind of in a, a different format, but uh, I've actually uploaded the template um, to the uh, Google Drive just so you can have a look um, for your own purposes if you want to get an understanding. But typically, this is what you would see um, in a regular Excel registry anyway, right? They just keep one line of information for one person. And then while it might be in one Excel sheet, it could be spread across several Excel sheets as well. But for the purpose of this, let's just say at least this part is okay and it's all in one spreadsheet, okay? So in the case that you know you have this this way, um, then you don't really need to do too much, right? If everything is kind of aligned in, in such a way that uh, um, you know, you're, you're able to have this, then, then that's okay. But if you have both the trouble with the data being kind of a problematic from the standpoint where there's all kinds of issues with the data, and then you also have the data spread across multiple spreadsheets, um, and you know there are also problems there with those spreadsheets in terms of the format of some of the information. Um, you know, then you would you know want to give it a little bit more time. So the more complexity involved in kind of cleaning and preparing this information, um, you do want to leave a bit more time overall for that step to bring the data into the system, right? Um, so you know probably uh, if things are very neat and tidy and there has been some kind of built-in validation and and you know. For the most part, things look okay. Things are all, you know, um, even if they are spread across one sheet, there's a kind of unique identifier that can be used to link them. And the unique identifier format is, is kind of, you know, well built. So if they're using a passport or something or a birth certificate, then this number is consistent between those various spreadsheets that are available, right? So, so the less kind of messy the data is, the less time you will need to spend or allocate to this whole process of cleaning it up, right? So when you're making estimates in terms of how long this would take, it's just some considerations to have, right? And then likewise, if the data is quite clean and nice, it will take you a lot less time to format it in a way such that you're making it ready to bring it into the system, okay? And, and there are tools and, and other things that can help in, in terms of formatting this in such a way, um, especially if you know the data is linked across various sheets or, or various um, you know, pieces, disparate information, or even in some kind of database that wasn't kind of well-built and there are just uh, problem, problems with that information um, that you need to kind of deal with um, as you go through this process. Um, so after we have all this information in a format that's acceptable um, to DHIS2, um, we can then basically bring this in. And what we do is we map all these variables you know, Eric showed you quickly when he was bringing in the aggregate data, mapping, there's this mapping process between the program indicator and the data element. You know, we basically do the same thing, but instead of mapping um, between, you know, different uh, aggregate data elements, we're just mapping between all the different data elements uh, and, uh, and uh, all the registering information that are in our program, right? So if we look at the program again, we would map against all this demographic information that we see on the front page. And we would also map all the vaccination information um, that we see here, okay? And this would also take a little time, but in terms of estimates of time, it's very short. Like, you know, maybe one day for a large amount of data, maybe even less, um, depending on, you know, how, how fast the person is um, with working with these tools. Um, so, so, you, so, you know, if we're trying to kind of come up with it, once again, this is to help you come up with an estimate of time um, to understand this process a little bit more. It doesn't have to take a, a ton of time to, to map the variables, as long as everything is consistent. Um, if you have or are improving you know, your configuration and have modified a lot of things, um, then of course it might take a bit more time once again um, to map. So if what you're seeing in DHIS2, for example, is a little bit different or significantly different than what you have in all your various Excel sheets, because you know there are different possibilities available now that you're moving to, uh, to DHIS2 perhaps, um, then the mapping might take a little bit more time, okay? So let's just go over to, to this app, okay? So this is the same app that Eric showed in his demonstration, the, the data import wizard. It allows you to bring in aggregate data as he showed. You can also bring in tracker data. 
Okay, um, so it's quite useful in the in the sense that you can bring in both the data types, um, and it allows you to kind of manipulate both data types and map them accordingly. Um, so I have a mapping saved um, for this uh, registry, and I'll show you how to kind of the process of creating a new mapping quickly. We won't map the whole thing because uh, that will take a little bit of time, but just to show you how to map a couple things. But for now, I'm just going to take the data I have, okay, which is this sheet here, and, and import it, basically bring it into DHIS2, okay? So just drag and drop that file, okay? And everything's saved for now, so I'm not gonna get into all the options, but then we'll review the options after, after we've shown one example, okay? Um, so here we, we, we have some options to uh, map all the information. This is similar to what Eric showed in terms of uh, matching the organization units, okay? There's a lot more information that you would map in this case, just because you're mapping tracker data instead of, of uh, aggregate data, but the process is, is the same and, and we'll go over this, right? So here's all the demographic information that we saw on the registration page, right? The name, the sex, the date of birth, the address, okay? Things of that nature that would uniquely identify this individual, okay? Um, I can add one more. Oh, I think I added the wrong file. Let me just make sure here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. And then you know we would we would kind of map all that demographic information to our Excel sheet. You can see some of it's filled in already, right? The given name is mapped to the given name in the Excel sheet. Some of the names are different in the system. Um, than they are on the Excel sheet, and, and that's okay. Um, so so we'll, we'll go over actually, you know, how you do this process a little bit, right? The next part is mapping all the information collected on the vaccination event, okay? So we go through, and here's all the individual data items that are within that vaccination event, and we go through, and we map them to our Excel sheet, okay? And if you're using some other process, even though this is more like a visual interface to map things, I mean, you would basically be doing the same thing at some level, whether it be um, some other process that you use, um, or it be some kind of user interface that allows you to map these items. But you would always want to give some time for the person, whoever's helping you with this, or if you're doing it yourself, to map these elements out, right? To take the data elements in your system and map them with the information that's kind of being brought in um, through whatever mechanism you're using. It might be an Excel sheet. It might be another, another system, okay? And, and however that's being done, you would want to give some time in order to map the characteristics between the data you have and the kind of the, the DHIS2 system that you're bringing this data into. Okay, so once again, we'll go over the specifics of this in a moment. Okay, so once that's done, you know, I, I've all the mapping's been completed already. We can get a preview actually of, of the data that's uh, being imported. So I just open one of these up. Here's this individual that's on the spreadsheet. Okay, so for example, if I Go back to my spreadsheet. I think that's this person here. Okay, this is my first person, James Holden. He has these these ID numbers. He has his sex. Okay, and you can see here um, some of the information um, that's going going to be brought in as part of this process. So it gives you a a nice preview before you bring it in um, to the system. Okay, and there's a bunch of different tabs up here because you're registering the person, right? You're bringing that person in with all their demographic details. And you're also creating what's you know what's called an event. Basically, this is all the vaccination information, right? So um, this vaccination event will be associated with that person that I'm bringing in, right? It's all on the same line. It will all be uniquely associated with that individual, um, and we should see this as well. Okay. So I'll go ahead and import this, and here we have a success. Okay, it's brought in everything. So we can go ahead and just check if it's been brought into the system. So I'll just go to uh, let's go to tracker capture here, and I think I brought them into ostrich, ostrich center, yeah. And we go to our vaccination program. Okay. So here are the people I I just brought in, right? So here's that James Holden, for example, who is the first person um, in my list. So if I click on his record, I should then see the vaccination information also, right? because we brought in both the individual as well as that vaccination information, right? And we can see all the, the data spilled in um, for that individual. And if I expand their profile here, um, we'll see that their profile is also filled in with all the information that I brought in about that person, right? 
So yeah, once we get to the stage where we've prepared everything and everything's ready to go, um, then, you know, bringing it into the system, depending on the amount of records, of course, if you're bringing in a lot of records, you will need some time to import them all um, just because you don't want to probably throw in, you know, try and bring in like a million records at once if, if you're trying to do that. Um, but you might segment it off into small batches and do it that way, for example. Um, but, but, you know, generally, once you're able, the, the, the larger part of this process is cleaning and formatting the, the, the data in a way that will be accepted by the system. And when you're kind of um, coming up with time estimates in terms of, you know, making adequate time for this to happen, um, you know, that is going to be a, a much longer process um, versus kind of, you know, once you are ready to bring it in uh, to the system after everything's been mapped. So I would say, you know, this whole process of formatting the data, cleaning the data, and, and then mapping the data too, you would want to include that. Might not take a long time to map the data necessarily, especially if you have someone very familiar with the system and someone very familiar with the data working together. Um, but, you know, those should all be included in your estimate of time um, when you're thinking about bringing in this type of information. Um, once you get to that point where everything is kind of clean, formatted, and mapped, um, then the process to bring it in, um, you know, it can take a little bit of time as well, but the amount of time for that is going to be less, and it increases with the amount of records that you are um, um, kind of bringing into your system. And if you have a lot of records, then you will need a little bit more time so you can allow the person to helping you, or if you're doing it yourself, to kind of batch that off into smaller pieces um, so they can bring that into the system. All right, so let's just go back and discuss some of the steps to, to map this data. Because whether you're doing it here in a user interface or whether you're doing it, maybe you just have an Excel sheet with two columns or something like that, or whatever you're doing in order to map this data, this is an important step um, when you bring it into the system. So I'll just show some examples of this using the template I previously brought in. Just bring that in again. Okay, so when you're bringing in tracker data, you have a, a couple things to, to kind of consider. So let's just go back to tracker capture to, to have a look. And once again, we won't get into so much detail, but just so you understand um, a bit of the process. Here, let's go back to where we brought some of our records actually. Okay, so you can see all, all the information that we um, require is, is on this page. And you need to make sure that all these parameters are included, right? So the person you're kind of bringing into the system, the case or person or, you know, whatever it is that you're bringing into the system, they need to be associated with an organization unit of some kind, right? So that could be a facility or a district or, um, you know, whatever your hierarchy is kind of built around, okay? Um, then you need a date in which that person gets registered into the system, okay? And then you have, this, this will differ for, from system to system, right? But at, at the minimum, you will need these two. Um, kind of key attributes. And then here, um, oh, sorry, this is adverse events, wrong program. Let's go to code that. Okay. okay. You can see in this case, they also have this latitude and longitude. This is their location. So if you have that information, you could also bring it in. Um, chances are, if you're using a spreadsheet, you might not have that information at the time. But if you do, of course, um, you can bring it in. Um, and then, you know, all this profile information, it's different from program to program, from place to place. So depending on your configuration, you know, you just need to keep track of all the information um, that you're bringing into the system. So if I go back to the kind of mapping here, now I only have one organization unit um, in my Excel sheet, and that's why it's only recognized um, one organization unit. So if you have more, like right now, I just have Ostrich Health Center. But if I had more, those mappings would also be displayed. Okay, And you can see here on the left side is the source. On the right side is the destination. The destination is the DHIS2, um, uh, DHIS2 system. The source is the Excel sheet that I've uploaded. Okay, and you can see here there's a drop down, so I can, you know, if if for whatever reason these names were vastly different, or I was using some other naming scheme perhaps, um, and I normalized my names um, in DHIS2, and they weren't normalized in the spreadsheet, you know, um, I I can uh, of course you know map them to whichever um, organization unit in the system that I want to, right? So it's kind of depending on you to make sure that the mapping is appropriate when you're bringing in this data. Okay. Um, okay. 
We also have this um, enrollment date, okay? It's called enrollment date, but this is just, in this case, the date of registration, right? So when am I actually registering that person into DHIS2? And we just take that uh, and we can select, you can see here, if I click on this, all the different columns from the spreadsheet are, are available, right? So what I can do is basically select one of the dates that you know I'm using to register that individual. In this case, if I look at the Excel sheet, uh, not this one, this one, okay, I have a date of registration column, okay? And I can select that date of registration column from the dropdown, right? So I'm just mapping each and every field to DHIS2's kind of terms, or uh, in, in some cases, the metadata as well, right? So these are these two minimum fields that I mentioned. And then we go through the same process and we just play this matching game with the rest of the spreadsheet, right? So um, you have all the demographic details here for COVID-19 and you go through and you just map the left side with the right side, right? So um, here on the left side, this is everything inside of DHIS2. On the right side here, this is what's in your Excel sheet. You just select a box. You can select from any of the columns or headings in your spreadsheet. And you just make that mapping one-to-one -one as close as you can um, based on the spreadsheet that you're kind of entering, right? So I think that I missed one here so I can show it. So for example, I have this unique system identifier. I have this column in my spreadsheet called system ID, okay? And this is my unique identifier in this case that I wanna map. So if I just type in system ID or I just search or I just use the dropdown, um, whichever one, okay? I can then map the left to the right side. And now it's been saved, or sorry, now it's been mapped to the um, to the to this kind of uh, identifier within the DHIS2 system, okay? So it, it's not uh, too complicated to do this mapping if everything's kind of clean and ready, okay? Um, you also in DHIS2 have these, uh, you know, what we call option sets. These are these drop-down lists, right? So in the case of sex, for example, I have male and female as my option sets. And then if I look at the um, item here, there's this button to map options, right? Because sex has this drop-down list, right? So any field that has these drop-down lists we also have to map these to the spreadsheet. Um, so I'll just click on one to show you, okay? So once again, you have the, the destination on the left, destination meaning DHIS2, the source meaning your Excel, and you just enter in. In this case, there's not a dropdown because it doesn't read all the individual unique items um, that you've entered for the data, right? It just uh, reads those headings, um, at least at this point in time, it will, it will do that when you go to import the data. Um, but then, you know, if I look at my spreadsheet and I look at the, the fields for sex, right? I've just written as male and female. But in some cases, if you, you know, let's say you just put M, um, you know, M and F or something, right? And then, uh, then you could map those as well, right? So if this was how it looked for all my columns, I could just say in the spreadsheet, this is how it looks. And then I wanna map those to the options that are male and female, the full thing in my system, okay? So it's completely dependent upon what your data looks like. Not everything might be a one-to-one -one in terms of how they're spelled or how they're matched, but the whole idea is to enable you to match what's in your Excel sheet to, or, or whatever you're importing, I should say, um, from whatever destiny or whatever source system you're importing from to the DHIS2 system. So even if things are a little bit different, spelled a bit differently, named a bit differently, um, you should still be able to map them um, to the system. And this is true right now, because we have this nice interface to do this, but even if you were just matching them in an Excel sheet or something like that, right, um, with the, the two columns side by side, you would want to be able to perform this operation and provide a bit of time to perform this operation as well. Okay, you can see in this example, for I have COVID, so the name of the data element is COVID slash occupation, um, but here I just call it occupation in my Excel sheet, so even though they're not the same, um, you can still map them together, okay. Um, so you do this for your entire uh, for both all, all the registration items, as well as the, the data elements. So you can see why I said it might take a little bit of time, depending on your program, because um, you could theoretically have uh, many more data elements, or, or you could have many of these options that you have to map. But you know, the process itself is, is not too bad. Once the data is cleaned up, and you're able to make sure you can map uh, between your source data and, and the, the DHIS2 system, right? So in this case, we're just matching left and right sides, um, you know, using the, these dropdowns basically 
But if you were doing it in another process, it'd be a similar process, right? Um, just mapping all these uh, pieces of information. Okay. And once this mapping is, is done, um, you know, you can save it. Um, and then it'll come in uh, to bring in the information. Um, in this case, I've already imported this. So it's not uh, importing, well, it's importing new, um, some new uh, the system ID basically, which wasn't mapped before, but everything else, it's not going to re-import. You can see there's no new um, entities, which means there's no new people that I'm importing. Um, there's no new events. There's no new vaccination information because all the vaccination information is the same. It's just the system ID because I added in the, the system ID field. Um, so if I were to import this, it would just update um, this field. Okay. So this is a pretty, pretty neat tool um, in order to help you um, perform some of this operation. But for the overall process, it's just so you can kind of understand um, how you would get there as well, right? So importing is the final step. Um, and, and it's really, uh, um, you know, there's a, a lot of tools and a lot of different ways that this could be done. But, you know, in all cases, regardless if you're using this wizard or you're using some other way to bring the, the data into the system, um, you know, in many cases, you will have to review the data, clean the data, format the data, and map the data, right? So those three, three steps are, are essential before you bring the data into the system, because if the, those things aren't, aren't kind of ready or, or available, you're going to spend a lot of time just kind of not being able to, to map the information in a correct way or running into lots of problems. Like if you're bringing this data into your system, there'll be all kinds of validation issues, perhaps. Um, so, you know, making sure that those things are in place beforehand, that's probably the largest amount of time that you will want to kind of allocate um, to this task um, if you need to bring in some type of historical data. Okay. Um, so I know I went through that quickly, um, but this was more just so you understand the process overall, um, rather than giving you, you know, a detailed background on how to perform this. Of course, if you are interested in more information on how to do this, uh, you can download the app. We have the app available um, in our demo instance, and I've given you the data um, as well. So um, if you want to kind of, you know, just review the recording and manipulate the data a bit and see if you can get it to work, um, please feel free to do so. And you can ask us questions about that. We're happy to help you. Um, but, but, you know, just so you know, I hope you get a better picture in terms of the time allocation um, you might want to consider for this. And, and hopefully you're not asking people um, in the future to just like do it um, the next day because um, you would have seen that it's typically not the, the case where um, it's going to be possible in some cases, especially if the data is very messy and it requires some cleanup because that will take a substantial amount of time. All right.